Chapter 14, more on consciousness. All things exist as vibration in the mind of God. We say that consciousness itself or the mind is vibration. The consciousness of God is one vibration. And from this comes the infinitude of vibrations or frequencies that make up all of existence. This includes space. It too is vibrations or distinct frequencies within the mind. Therefore, space does not exist separately somewhere. It exists only in the mind, as do all things. They only go out there in space when we project them and perceive them. This leads, of course, to the obvious question. If all things exist only in the mind as vibrations, or what we call thoughts, then where are they when the mind is not thinking of them or not projecting them? The answer is just as obvious although it may be hard to accept. The fact of the matter is that things exist only when we perceive them. When we don't perceive them, they simply cease to exist in, ex in space. If I happen to be in my town interacting with people and perceiving the usual things that exist in that space, that is all that exists for me. Everything else, the entire universe that is not within my perception ceases to exist. When I travel to the next town and perceive different things and different people, then my town and all the people and things I left behind cease to exist. At that moment, my entire universe is made up of only that which is within my perception. Now, the beauty of it is that even though my town has ceased to exist, its timeline, so to speak, continues in my mind, as do the timelines of all other things, i.e., everything that is not currently in my perception. By that, I mean things will continue to age accordingly as if they still exist in space. So when I return to my town, say 10 years later, it will come back into existence as soon as it comes back into my perception and it will be in its proper time slot. The people will have aged by 10 years. Some buildings will be gone, replaced by new ones maybe. Trees and other plants will be gone or be different. Some people will have died and others will have been born, etc. So as soon as I bring it back into existence by perceiving it, it will automatically fall into the proper time slot, which is naturally and effortlessly calculated by my mind. And that is because even though it has ceased to exist in space, it continued to exist in my mind. My mind is then able to age everything properly and make the changes that I now see. Because the mind being one knows the beginning, middle and end of all things. It is able to allocate to all things their proper time slots and places in space, even when I, the person, does not perceive those things. This allocation results in a sense of continuity. It is this sense of continuity that gives the impression that things continue to exist even when I did not perceive them. But such is not the case. They simply do not exist when I don't perceive them. The entirety of existence consists only of that which is within my perception at any given moment. Nothing else exists outside of that. Someone of course could say, well, when you left the town, other people remain there, not to mention all the animals, etc., that are also able to perceive. And since they continue to perceive the town, then it continued to exist in space, just like it did when you perceived it. The hard truth is that it really does not matter what anyone else perceives. As long as it is not within your perception, it does not exist. If you do not see those people perceiving the town, how do you know that they are perceiving it? You do not know this for a fact. You only surmise that they must be there and must be perceiving, but you do not see that as an actuality. Think of it like this. Let's suppose that the day after you leave that town, God wipes it off the map entirely and no one ever tells you that. Then a day before you come back, God puts it back in its place and in the proper time with everything aged accordingly and the people's memories adjusted accordingly. If you have the belief that things exist outside of your perception, you will incorrectly conclude that the town existed all the time in that space, even though it actually ceased to exist. That is precisely what happens with everything that leaves your perception. 
God does not have to use any energy to wipe it off the face of the universe. It naturally and effortlessly ceases to exist in space as soon as you cease to perceive it. Later, when you get back and talk to your friends and they tell you how things were while you were gone, you are actually creating that history anew as you hear it. All those people telling you what went on in your absence are being projected by you and being perceived by you in the present and that past is being created anew. If the past they are telling you about is true, it is being taken directly from the one mind by you and being projected out so you can perceive it and experience it now. You are making it ex exist in space right there. The above mentioned will help to explain why it is possible to mentally go back in time and experience the past. When we travel back in time, we create the past using our own mind. It does not exist in space anywhere before then. To bring it to existence, we take the images of the past from the one mind and project them out so we can perceive them and experience them. So it is not as if the past really exists at some point in time or some place in space. It does not. It will exist in space and time only when you project it outward and perceive it. And if you perceive it truly, then it will be the true past, exactly as it exists in the one mind of God. God has already set it in place by giving us the experiences of the present, the now, in the manner that we experience the now. This now that we experience is related to the past, which we also must experience. And that is why the past is fixed and unchangeable, because it is the mother, so to speak, of the present. It has to be exactly as it is recorded in God's mind in order for it to give rise to the present we are now experiencing. So all people who travel to the true past will see exactly the same past. So this past exists only when we project it and perceive it just like the present. Therefore, it can only be perceived in the now, in the present moment. In fact, now is the only time that exists because of what I'm perceiving now is all that exists. Depending on the stage of one's development or initiation, there are different methods available of how to get to the past. The simplest for initiates is to go through a gatekeeper and use that mind to see exactly the past as the gatekeeper sees it. Some initiates that are far more advanced may not need the help of a gatekeeper as they can create a means for themselves to independently perceive any time in the past. So when I get to that point in the past, I actually recreate it exactly as it was then. But because I perceive it now, it actually exists now in the present at the time that I perceive it. The gatekeeper who assists me is my projection as well, just like everything else I perceive. So the past must be created anew in order to be perceived. As you can imagine, this requires a complete stillness of the mind in order to be able to receive the true images of the past from the higher mind. If one's mind is not totally still, there is the possibility of inserting one's own imaginations and adding scenes to the past that did not happen. But with enough training, the process becomes very simple and effortless. And one is then able to make the past exist again in the present. But to repeat, this past does not exist until I project it and perceive it. Again, I could hear someone say, what about other initiates who have traveled to the past before you and even taught you how to do the same? Are you saying their experiences are not real since the past will exist only when you perceive it? And again, I will say, the perceptions and experiences of other people do not matter to you as long as they are separate from you. The only perceptions that make up reality are your own. When other people tell me that they went to the past, that is not my experience. Therefore, as long as I am a separate person, I have no way of knowing it as an actual fact. Them standing before me and the stories they tell me and the valuable teachings that they impart to me and all the initiations that they so lovingly put me through, all these things are actually me projecting them into existence exactly the same way I project and perceive everything else. Similarly, the only way for the past to exist and become part of my experience 
is for me to receive it from the mind in a true form and project it. Then, and only then, does it come into existence. And then I can perceive and experience it. The ancient pyramids, the amazing monuments that we see, the incredible ancestors that we hear about today, all these things are the daughters of a mother who does not yet exist for me. But I have a definite idea of what that mother looks like because I have the daughter to look at. This daughter guides us to the correct images when it is time for us to travel to the past. We do so in the right way and see the past exactly as it was. In other words, we create it in time and space exactly as it should be because we are able to receive the proper images of the mother, the past, having experienced the daughter, having experienced the present. So you see, nothing else exists in space except what is here and now in your perception, not the past, not even things of the present that are outside your perception. All the talk about how large the universe is, how much matter is in it, how much energy, how long it has been around, etc. All these things do not yet exist for you if you do not perceive them. They will exist only when you perceive them. So at this moment, as you are where you are, there are no billions of galaxies in existence hanging in space out there somewhere you cannot see them. All these things are still in the mind as thoughts waiting for you to perceive them. When you do, then and only then do they come into existence. All the great ancestors you have heard about who lived in the past do not exist yet for you. They are waiting in the one mind for you to make contact with that mind of your higher self. Once you do, then you are able to project them out and perceive them and give them actual existence in space in the now moment. This is the whole reason why it is so important to do everything that we can to make contact with our ancestors, either our spiritual or biological ancestors. There are many ways to do this, including praying to them, doing certain rituals, thanking them, etc. Even something as simple as just thinking about them every night before you go to sleep. Eventually, they will manifest in front of you in one way or another, either when awake or asleep. At that time when they do, you are actually projecting them and perceiving them and thus giving them actual existence again in space, in the present, and so they live again. There is nothing they love more than this. So then to continue about perception, when I move my eyes around, turn my head and look to the side and look behind me, I am bringing all those things I perceive into existence by projecting them from my mind and perceiving them with my senses. The entire process is natural, simple and effortless because it deals only with vibrations or thoughts, or we could say images or imaginations. The creation of the universe does not require the expenditure of any energy at all. Energy itself is just another thought in the mind of God. Now, of course, another obvious question is if creation requires no expenditure of energy, why does it actually take energy to do most anything? Why does it take energy to cook food, walk a mile, drive a car from point A to point B, etc.? Why can't I just imagine and project the cooked food or imagine myself in another place and be there. The reason is because the original creator set in place natural laws that must be followed in order to have a harmonious, orderly creation. These laws start at the most basic level and go through all seven forms of motion where a person must crawl before he can walk, walk before he can run, run before he can fly, fly before he can dematerialize, dematerialize before he can travel mentally, and travel mentally before he can attain total divine unity in which he is everywhere at the same time. As a person develops physically and mentally, spiritually, then he or she discovers higher laws that will supersede the basic laws. At a certain level of development, a person will discover natural laws that will make it possible for him or her to fly instead of walk or to dematerialize the body and rematerialize somewhere else. The further he or she advances, the less energy he or she will need to do basic things that require a lot of energy at the basic level until he or she reaches a stage 
where he or she can do things without using any energy at all, but simply by using the mind. At that point, it is said the person has reached absolute perfection and has become full God like the elders, lacking them only in experience. <laughs>